consultations with economists recently and in today's roundup we are going to request Dr. Ashok Galati to give us some idea of what he thinks is on the mind of the government. Uh, there have been two other rounds of consultations Dr. Galati. Uh, Prime Minister Modi has had one set of consultations, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman who is preparing the budget uh, to be presented on the 23rd. She has had a round of consultations and of course the Agriculture Minister Mr. Shivra Chauhan has had consultations. Um, we'd like to understand what do you think is on the mind of the government with regards to the agriculture sector? Well, uh, thanks for having me on your show. Uh, if we knew what is in their mind, uh, then uh, you can predict everything. Uh, that's not feasible. But uh, uh, I can give a flavor of uh, you know, what had been a sort of some consultations and what is the thinking broadly. Uh, what will come in the budget is something different because there are always some surprises. Uh, first, let me say I have been uh, lucky and grateful to Ministry of Finance for inviting me, Niti Ayo, uh, where the Prime Minister's meeting was held, and also Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. So I have been in touch with different, uh, you know, policy makers and uh, with the Prime Ministers especially, uh, there were 17 economists who were invited uh, from all over the country. And when I speak, I speak agriculture, that's what I know about. So uh, we can give you a little flavor, not just of the immediate budget. The Prime Minister clearly said that he is looking forward to Vixit Bharat 2047 and therefore don't restrict your suggestions just on this budget but give us a medium to long term perspective how India can be a prosperous country and I think that showed in his commitment uh, two and a half hours meeting and he was so alert and alive on each one's suggestions and then he responded back to each one's suggestions. Now the details we were not supposed to spill over with the media so I can't give you this except this broad uh, thing. But one thing is clear that uh, from the reading that I could um, guess was that unless the majority of people in this country gain from whatever reforms, uh, structural or short term that we are doing. Uh, in fact, he was very clear that uh, unless agriculture and rural areas prosper, uh, you know, the manufacturing revolution or the urban growth will be a sort of a hostage to uh, the demand constraint. And that's coming out very clearly if you look at what the income levels are in the rural areas. I think in one of our earlier episodes, we talked about the consumption survey that has come on household consumption survey. Uh, it is of 22, 23. Uh, the rural uh, per capita uh, consumption uh, per month is 3,773. So if you take a uh, average holding uh, household size of 4.5, less than 17,000 rupees. Add a bit of inflation to it, add a bit of uh, savings if they at all have. Uh, even today, their income level on an average is less than 20,000 rupees per month. Now, with this level of average income of an household, it's very, very difficult uh, to, you know, continue the growth process of the manufactured goods because you and me uh, come in that class of top 15%, uh, maximum 20% of India. I would say 2% of India is living very good standards. Uh, we have seen some of those glimpses uh, who would be like in Europe or US or any other developed country. Uh, but uh, another 15% or so is living like uh, Southeast Asian countries and that's where we belong. But uh, quite a significant part, almost 80% uh, of India is still, uh, you know, 70 to 80% I would say is still uh, struggling to get ahead. That doesn't mean that entire 80% of India is poor. 
And that only means that some, like in Punjab, are better off compared to Bihar, the holding size, irrigation, other things that are there. But overall, uh, there has to be an effort to augment their incomes. That's very clear fundamental truth and that is recognized at the highest level in the government. That's what I can confirm. Question is, how do we do it? So, given the political economy in which we are, if you want short-term fixes, the band-aid, then you give more remedy, you give more freebies. And you have seen Maharashtra elections are coming, that budget was presented a few days back, it is full of freebies. Because any reform will take time to deliver. But freebies, uh, today you announce, tomorrow you can start distributing something, but that will not fix the fundamental problems. Okay. So my fear and expectation from the government is, the fear is the tax revenue is good. Will that be channelized more towards higher level of freebies, which will be very short term, appeasing given the elections in the three states that are coming up, or will they do some structural reforms and investments? You know, that's what it's going to take. If you do investments, let's say in rural infrastructure, at present we are talking of bigger infrastructure in the urban areas, highways, uh, big roads, uh, airports, ports, all those, they cannot absorb that much of labor coming from the rural areas because they have not been skilled to do this modern infrastructure of so-called New India or India in 47, which is needed, fine. Urbanization has to go up and India has to build one Chicago a year. So one is investment in skill formation so that people from rural areas can shift to higher productivity jobs in urban areas. That's one possible way, which will be a good way, so that they move from low productivity to high productivity jobs and their incomes can be augmented. The other is within agriculture and within rural areas, you invest more in infrastructure that can create jobs which are off farm. Because on the farm there are too many people and we need to reduce that proportion and that number, 45.8% of our labor force is still engaged in agriculture. It should not be more than 30% today. China moved its labor force from agriculture to build urban infrastructure and rural infrastructure. I think construction activity is the first sector that takes off the load from agriculture. But to do that, if you are developing very high-end infrastructure, you need to skill the people first or you develop a rural infrastructure. And in one of the earlier episodes, I said even Manrega money should be spent. All the kacha houses in rural areas should be converted into pakka houses. That's the basic minimum that we can give to everybody. I'm glad that that already the Prime Minister has announced that uh, there would be uh, you know two crores additional uh, houses in rural areas and one crore in the urban area so three crore. Maybe if he puts in even Manrega amount into that he can do that so within the next four or five years before he fights the next election Jogis become a history in this country all Jogis are converted into pakka houses that will demand masons and all the carpenters and others which are in rural areas largely. So it will create off-farm employment in the rural areas itself rather than everybody crowding in the urban areas where they create slums and all that. So that's one possible way. Second is within agriculture. How much are you going to augment your high value agriculture? Because incomes will increase not with mere cereals. The demand for high-value agriculture, poultry, fishery, dairy, that is growing three times faster than uh, the demand for uh, cereals. So are you going to put in more resources for the value chains in the high-value agriculture? I think that we will have to wait for the announcement 
in the budget. If they do that, then I hope they can augment the income of the farmers in that line, as well as create off-farm rural employment by constructing the infrastructure. Uh, Dr. Lati, what was your recommendation to the Prime Minister? I'm sure you're allowed to tell us about it. Well, you know, as I said, <laughs> we're not supposed to give uh, too much details of that meeting. But uh, uh, I have been writing openly op-eds and uh, I'm very clear that the immediate threat to agriculture is coming from climate change. And you have two ways to deal with it. One, you have to invest in climate resilient agriculture and climate smart agriculture. That means the farming practices have to change. That means the extension work should be geared towards that. That means the allocation for ICAR, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, which is less than 0.5% of the value of agriculture GDP, that needs to go up, uh, I would say double, but even if you go up by 25, 30, 40%, uh, that would come very handy to deal with climate change because you need to develop also climate uh, resilient uh, seed varieties. The second part is what is going to happen to your agriculture crop insurance, the PM Fossil Bima Yojana. Because all these results of creating a climate resilient and climate smart agriculture will take time to fructify. But if tomorrow there is a heat wave or if there is a flood, the problem is extreme weather events and we are witnessing right away. Even today, as we talk, look at what is happening in Assam or parts of UP, it is all flooded. So farmers lose. When they lose, how quick, how fast and how accurately we can compensate them. And that Fasal Bhima Yojana needs to be put on a high tech and automatic payments. So that means we need to be able to uh, gauge what is the uh, crop loss. We need to be able to monitor the plots continuous basis. That means you need to fix up uh, what we call the low earth orbits, which can track every plot uh, on that. And you have to link the Jandan accounts of the farmers for the compensation so that farmers should not come on the roads to ask for compensation. It is automatically done because you can assess where the damage is, how much is the damage and how much compensation needs to be given. That will create a big trust between the farmers and the insurance agencies and the reinsurers who are at the back of the success of PM uh, Fasal Bhima Yojana. At present, the Fasal Bhima Yojana, I would say out of 10, I would give only 6 or 7 uh, marks. It needs to be taken to 9 or 9 plus and that effort needs to be put in. Uh, it requires hard work. And uh, Dr. Glati, on the 23rd, uh, in the budget, uh, what is your expectation? Is the, is the subsidy going up a lot? Uh, you know, you've been for long on this show, in your op-eds, in all of your research writings, you've been saying that the subsidies need to be reformed. Uh, are you expecting some reform uh, in the budget or you think the political compulsions right now, the it's not ready, the ground realities don't still allow? You know. I wish uh, they can reform, uh, whether they will bite the bullet or not, that only the time will tell. Uh, my feeling is that at present, uh, a budget is likely to be around 47 lakh crores, the union budget. Out of that, 5 lakh crores will be the subsidy on food, fertilizer, and uh, you know, PM uh, Fasal Bhima Yojana, the premium that is uh, given, or the agriculture credit, the interest rate subvention, and some smaller, smaller other subsidies. If they can bite the bullet on food subsidy and fertilizer subsidy, that's the biggest reform they can do. And because these two together are about four lakh crores. And I can write right here that if you are ready to bite this bullet, and you want to reform this for the good of the country and the stakeholders, you can save out of this 4 lakh crores at least 1 lakh crores. 1 lakh crores without giving up the objective function of helping the needy. And there is a process. 
you have to prepare yourself well. You need to communicate that with the stakeholders, the farmers as well as the consumers uh, who are getting free uh, wheat and rice. So it requires a good preparation. I'm not sure whether they are ready for it as of today, but uh, they are not ignorant about this either. They know that something can be done. Uh, if they remain focused and if they prepare for six months, I feel they can definitely do it in the next budget, if not this budget. And the preparation of how to do it, because operationalizing a plan of action and then communicating to the farmers, and that communication is extremely, extremely critical because we have seen how the farm reforms were rolled back and to me it was lack of communication. And there was nothing seriously wrong in the farm reform laws. Uh, but if you don't communicate then alternate a narrative of oh it's all going to be against your interest and all that uh, in a democratic society everybody has the right to say whatever they like. I think that narrative needs to be the counterject. So you have to build your own positive narrative well in advance. And for that, you need to sit down with the farmers. Uh, Dr. Gulati, in fact, one day before the budget, I think on the 22nd, farmers are planning some sort of protest all over again. Um, what would your recommendation, first of all, uh, what do you think is likely to happen? How will it play out? And second, how, what do you think should be the government's response? You know, whatever I read in the newspapers, uh, it's not going to be like the last time Dharna, but uh, Shambhu border is still uh, somewhat uh, controversial what is happening on that one. But the press conference that the farmer leaders, uh, Sayyukt uh, Kishan Morcha, SKM, that gave, uh, basically highlighted two or three uh, major uh, demands. And they are continuously repeating, we want uh, MSP to be made legal for all the crops and it should be fixed at uh, C2 plus 50 percent to the so-called Swaminathan formula, although in the Swaminathan committee report you don't find C2 plus 50 percent specifically. It is uh, weighted cost and 50 percent. So what is that weighted cost? Is it A2, or the paid out cost or is it the imputed cost of uh, land and uh, uh, on the capital also, that's where uh, there is a big difference. So the question is, if the government accepts that demand, the prices of these 23 commodities for which uh, mm. MSP is declared uh, will go up by about 20 to 25 percent. Is the government ready for that when already they are saying inflation is high and there is a whole narrative that uh, inflation, 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 opposition is claiming that and now if you raise it by another 20%, 25% these in one go. So to me and that is not feasible and I don't think government will go that way. Having said that, two, three things that we need to note. Uh, these 23 commodities actually don't contribute more than 30% of the value of agriculture. The rest of the 70% of agriculture is outside the MSP regime and that is growing much faster than these MSP crops. But Punjab, Haryana, which have done a yeoman's job in giving food security to the country, today are suffering from ecological disaster. And the water table is going down, the soil structure is uh, degrading. On top of that, there is a lot of methane and uh, nitrous oxide that is going in the environment and then stubble burning and so on and so forth. So it's an ecological disaster right under our nose. And they need to be given a special package. Bottom line of that is any alternative package the profitability of the farmer must be higher than in paddy cultivation. Only then it will take off. Now we have worked very closely on that issue and we have interacted with many stakeholders in Punjab and Haryana, including their development commissions and so on and so forth. Our estimate is at present you are giving a subsidy on paddy cultivation to the tune of almost 39,000 rupees per hectare. 
it is coming from power subsidy at the state level, canal subsidy from the state level, and fertilizer subsidy from the central level. If they switch from paddy to say pulses or oil seeds or millets in the Kharif season, and you give them 35,000 rupees per hectare, Anybody growing and switching from paddy to pulses or oil seeds in Kharif season or even maize, I would say, you give them 35,000 rupees on a 50-50 basis. That is 50% will come from the state, 50% will come from the center and give it for five years at least. Promise that. You are not doing anything extra because you will be saving your power subsidy at the state level, canal subsidy at the state level and center will be okay. saving its fertilizer subsidy. So there is no extra burden. It is just realigning and repurposing and rerouting the same subsidies to take care of the environmental issues. Okay. Haryana is already giving 17,500 rupees. They have announced, but so low. At present, they are giving only for one year. So nobody is ready to take up or very few people are ready to take up. If the central government comes in and says, we top it up by another 17,500, so together is 35,000 and we will give it for five years because it will save my fertilizer subsidy and it will save the power subsidy of the states. Then our understanding is quite a bit of thing will start changing. We need to reduce paddy cultivation to the tune of about 1 to 1.5 million hectares in Punjab Haryana belt. The two together are about 4.5, 4.6 million hectares. So out of that, 1 to 1.5 million hectares need to be reduced and this could be a package. But to do that, you have to sit down with the farmers. Those who are protesting, call them. I have written earlier that there should be a farmers council, two farmers from each state. Now Punjab Arena, we see only these farmers protesting. Where are the Bihar farmers, where are the Tamil Nadu farmers, where are the you know Andhra farmers and all that. We need to hear them also. And we recognize that there is a special uh, you know, problem in Punjab Haryana and they are tuned to only MSP regime because they have been producing wheat rice for decades and everything they dump it on the government. Government doesn't need it. Right now, the rice stocks with the government are three and a half times the power stock now. So this has to be communicated to farmers that the country doesn't need that much of rice. You switch, but we will make sure that your profitability is more than what you are getting in rice cultivation. If you can do that, then I think farmers are sensible to there is always some politics, but if you are a political you know party, you should be able to deal with that. In fact, uh, uh, elections are uh, around the corner in Haryana. Do you think the ground is, political ground is fertile for something like this? I would urge uh, Mr. Shivraj Singh Chauhan immediately to announce formation of an agriculture council uh, of all the states on the lines of GST council with the ministers, but also a farmers council where he should listen to the farmers of different states at the time of Kharif or Ravi, uh, you know, conference uh, which is held here and let them hear others also. Uh, but time is too short now. So they have to act very fast. Otherwise, you never know where this farmers uh, protest and unrest uh, will go. So I hope they will, because some lessons should have been learned from the past experience. And the Lok Sabha result where? Lok Sabha results also have, although you know, people give different reasons. Yeah. My own reading was the largest number of seats that they have lost are from the rural and agriculture dominated places. Like in Nani and Belt, uh, BJP is cleaned off, you know, <laughs> literally on that. So we have to look at uh, agriculture issues somewhat uh, more closely. Uh, only positive uh, note that I see is uh, the new minister is quite active. Uh, he has, I hope, uh, some weight in the cabinet because if you have to reform the system, you have to take other colleagues in the cabinet also and you have to convince the prime minister that this is good for the farmers. Right now he is saying that he is ready to buy 
uh, pulses and all seeds that I must be. Now, if even if you can do this, not making it legal, but proactively asking NAFED to procure wherever the prices have gone below MSP, you can do a big service uh, to the farmers. But I think Punjab Haryana problem cannot be solved just by ensuring MSP of uh, pulses or oil seeds. They need a special package which will save on the subsidies that you are giving to create a crop neutral incentive structure because you have distorted the production basket. Those subsidies were perhaps right at a time when they were devised because we were short of food grains. So rice and wheat were given uh, priority and that situation is no more there. We are short of pulses and oil seeds and therefore if MSP instrument is to be used, it should be used for uh, pulses and oil seeds and I think on that note, uh, Shivraj Singh Johan is quite on track. Let's wish him all the best for this. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bilanti. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.